Um, we, we I look on no illusion whatsoever who the boss of the family is. No, I accept it completely. That, that Helen and I have just, uh, we've just done a bit of work with Fast Pitch in the US. There was some interesting stuff on mental toughness that I'll share with you. But I was working with the Brisbane Lions who were an AFL team. And one of the coaches said, Wayne, the problem with our blokes is they're not tough. And I said, mate, great. You could also say they're not good looking or wealthy either. It doesn't, doesn't, well, they're wealthy, but it doesn't mean anything. What do you mean? And he says, well, you know, the blokes are not hard. I said, yeah, again, mate, you're not telling me anything. And then one of the other coaches said, and this is one of those light on the hill moments, he said, the blokes can't do their job when they get a knock. When they get it, the blokes are useless and they can't do their job for us anymore. I said, now I understand, now we can coach it. Because this is what we did. I then said to the coaches, and all the research I've seen on mental toughness, any of the good stuff anyway, they start by saying to the coaches, what is mental toughness? What do you mean by that? And then they look at and they interview coaches and athletes and ask them to define it. And they pull out words like, what do you think? What sort of words have you written down? Uh, yeah. Um, never give up. Never give up. What else? Determination. Determination. Yep. Perseverance. Perseverance. Yes, resilience. Continuing to follow on with the game plan. Absolutely, overcoming adversity. Yep. Can handle the loss. Can handle, yes. Now we're getting there. So, our working definition was this is that the players will continue to do the job that we need them to do for the team, regardless of what happens to them or what's happening around them. That was our definition. So then we went through and said, what does that actually mean? <coughs> so we said, when they get a bad umpiring decision or refereeing decision, when a referee or an umpiring official makes a bad call, it was about 30 in the NRL green final last night, <laughs> all the wrong direction. <laughs> When they get fatigued, when they make an error, when they miss an opportunity, and the one that I started with, which was contact and injury. So what we figured out was what the coaches were actually saying was that when they said mental <coughs> toughness, what they really meant was that the players will continue to do the job that I want them to do for themselves and the team, even if these things happen. So they get a bad decision from an umpire and they go, one of these two things. Remember guys, it's not what happens to you, it's how you choose to react to what happens to you that decides how this works. <coughs> so I can go, bloody umpire, always picking on me, hate this bloody umpire, last time we played them, meanwhile while I've walked over here, they scored two goals because my sulking has cost the team even more dearly. So I need them to go umpiring decision. Not, that's not good. Let's move on. Fatigue. Obviously, they continue to do their job even when they're getting tired. <coughs> Wayne Smith, great quote. I was lucky enough to be invited to the debrief after the French lost the 2011 Rugby World Cup. And Smithy said, science is good, technology is great. Team values, all that stuff's really good, but in the end it comes to blokes getting off the deck and knocking other blokes down. As simple as that. He said, it's just about people just getting up and getting up and making another tackle and just never giving up. Error. Quite often players will drop a ball or they'll make an error. They drop their head. They drop out of play. Opportunity, they get a goal right in front. Penalty if you're in football should go in most of the time. What percentage of penalties go in? I don't know. Is there a percentage? 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 should go in. It's interesting so stat, I'll be just on that. All of them probably should go in, but when you miss an opportunity, so you're given an opportunity that you should have taken, and you go, oh no, I can't believe I missed that. The opposition have scored twice, what have you been doing now? And then the big one for us, of course, was contact and injury. When a player got a hit, did they continue to do their job for the team? What does knowing this mean that we can do? 
coach it. We can coach mental toughness now. It goes from the pub and the taxi driver and the barbecue talk to now we can actually do something about it. We can start to do it. However, we won't finish there, and this is the really clever stuff, I think, that, and I said somewhere the other day, I'm writing this up for Sports Code at the moment. What we <coughs> did was, we have access to some unbelievable technology in AFL. I'll give you a hint on just some of it. On the desk of the coach is a laptop during the game. And here is all the names of all the players in the team. And across the top, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, so the four quarters of AFL are listed. And inside each of those boxes are numbers like 11, 16, 8, and 9. And that's the number of minutes that we believe that that player can perform at an intensity level that we need him to perform to play our style of game. Now, when the players run out onto the field, they run in between two gates, and they've got a little chip on the back of their neck inside a little pouch, and it triggers that number, and it starts counting down straight away. And then when there's a minute to go, it flashes, and it says, this player has had enough, take him off. So we do between 100 and 150 interchanges, replacements a game. It's not that we have 150 players, We've got about eight on the bench, but we do 150 replacements a game. It's like a massive <coughs> game of chess because by the time as a coach, I ring up and go, tell him uh, we need him to go forward and him to go sideways. By the time the message gets out, the opposition might have changed nine players and what I'm sending out is no longer valid. So we need the players to think for themselves a lot on the field. So. We've got all this data, it's fair, we have unbelievable technology, we've got people doing analysis all the time. So what we did, we wanted to see if we could test this. If one of these things happened, were the players in fact refusing or not able to continue to do their job? So, <coughs> we had our analysts look at some of the key performance indicators, things like tackles completed, possession, work rate and some other things. And what we did, guys, is we tracked the players' key performance indicators along. And when one of these things happened, we got the analyst to mark it on the software. To say at that moment in time, the player made a mistake, they missed an opportunity, they got a knock, had a bad umpiring decision. The fatigue is something we did a little differently. And then we looked to see if the player's measurable Things dropped or did they maintain? Did they sustain? So all of a sudden we found what we believe is a measurement of mental toughness. Because we defined it, we identified what it looks like and then we could measure it and then we can coach it. So that's what we did. One thing we did notice, what the players sometimes do when they make a mistake or they get a they, they make an error, they miss an opportunity. What do they sometimes do in response? Try too hard. They try too hard. And what's the problem with that? Fatigue. They fatigue quickly, heart rate goes up, lactate goes up, and it blows out our tracking system, blows out our player performance monitoring system as well. So we think the player can stay on for nine minutes, they make a mistake, they go, I better make up for that, so they run all over the field. <coughs> blow themselves out and we're going to take them off early, which means we're going to put somebody else on earlier than wanted, which means they fatigue. So this has direct performance implications for the team. It goes from being a concept like blokes aren't hard enough to something we can actually measure, see and do something about. And that's what we did. So that's really exciting. So I want you to now to think about that. I want you to go back and talk to your teammate or your coaching partner there, armed now with that. Have a look at what you think about mental toughness. And now start talking about, okay, my sport, you know, I think mental toughness really is, and this is how I could go about coaching it. Now bring it back. Take it out of the world of the surreal. Bring it into something. Okay, what, is, what is now mental toughness in your sport, and how can you coach it?